How do you know if a bike fits you? Is the saddle too high or too low? Is your reach correct? How wide are your bars? Where do you put your cleats? Is your frame too big for you or is it too small? No one knows what it means. By the end of this video, hopefully you and I will both have a good idea and learn some valuable lessons from my personal experience getting a bike fit for the very first time. So let's get straight into it. In my current position on my Giant Defy Advanced 1, I've ridden around 12,000 miles. Would I say that my position is correct? Well, I did until recently when I started talking to Remain. After a couple of conversations, I now feel like my bike fit may be a little off. What just happened? So I'm just as excited as you guys to see how my position changes at the end of the video. Firstly, my bars are 39 centimeters from center to center. I got these bars to replace the 42 centimeter bars that came with the bike. My reach feels okay, but the more I think about it, I feel like the reach is too far or too long, should I say. This is mainly because my hands don't fall naturally on the hoods. It's not that I feel overstretched, although I may live to regret those words. It's just that I feel like I could be a little bit more compact. Before we dive any deeper, here is the geometry of the bike. It's a Giant Defy Advance 1 2016 model in a size medium, which I believe is around a 54, um, and that's the top tube length. That is what we are working with. Saddle height. Now, this is probably the most talked about measurement in bike fit from what I've seen online, probably because it's the most obvious and easiest to change. I have tried different positions and right now it's at 38 millimeters on the seat tube. We have different measurements. If we look at the saddle setback, then the saddle is as far back as it goes on its rails. Now, I don't remember ever changing this um, and I doubt that that is correct. So a big slap on the wrist for me there. It's worth mentioning that I also had a bad leg break when I was younger. This means that my left leg is slightly shorter than my right leg, or at least I think it is, and it's at a slightly different angle. Now to counter that, I have some homemade shims under my left shoe to balance things out. What? For the current cleat position, it was simply trial and error to get the foot in a position that felt right and didn't hurt my knees. Now that I've given you my unprofessional opinion, let's hop on the train from London to Swindon, which is where Remain is based as part of the Swindon Cycles bike shop. Before we get into any gory details, a disclaimer that this is an overview of my experience. Now in the future, we plan to create more in-depth videos on specific topics with Remain explaining. So the words from this video are from me as a keen cyclist who's getting a bike fit. So step number one is bike setup, which Romain is currently doing now. He's taking loads of measurements. This included leveling the bike with a laser level, as well as taking measurements of the bike as it currently is. If you were doing this at home, take that into consideration. You don't want the bike to be leaning like the leaning tower of Pisa. Some initial thoughts from measuring my bike were that my right lever was angled in more than the left lever. Your right one's a bit lower than the left. We also looked at the inner soles from my shoes. Romain is a brave man, I know. You can yeah. see your big toe. Yeah. You can see a little bit of the toes here, but not much. And a little bit on the heels. So you'd expect that to be more consistent. All the way across, but then from here to here is brand new. I want to mention that Remain actually offers two services. We've got the bike fit and we've also got the foot activation. Now this video covers the bike fit only. The foot activation will be covered in a separate video. He also noticed that the saddle nose was pointing down two degrees. Step number two on Remain's list was to get to know me as a rider. When I cycle, where I cycle, how far I cycle, and how intense. Any previous injuries that he should consider, as well as any issues I have experienced on the bike or any pains. I guess this helps him paint a better picture of A, what I want to get from the bike fit, and B, anything to be taken into account for the bike fit. I mentioned that the main issues that I've had when doing rides over 30 miles is upper back pain. If I've ever gotten pain riding, this is where it's been. Apart from that, I don't really experience pain in any other parts of my body. Now to quote Remain, bike fit is a process, not an event. Food for thought. Before we hopped on the horse, Remain did a little off bike screening with a few basic movements to assess my flexibility. Yeah, and you just go down as far as you can, keeping a straight back. Hey, that's, I can feel that in my hamstrings now. Okay, and now on the right. I'm not going to be doing the splits anytime soon. Once on the bike, Remain observed me riding and noticed a few things straight away from my position. My hips and shoulders rock, um, and I also had no neck, which I found mildly amusing for some reason. My arms are also pretty straight with not much bend. Have a look at my position, pause the video, and do comment down below what you think 
I could improve. Now onto the adjustments and the first point of call is my shoes. Now straight away we added new cleats as mine looked like they had had a very hard life. Historically people used to have the cleats further forward but it's now becoming more accepted to have it further back. Remain measured my fifth metatarsal, the base of my big toe, the fifth metatarsal, the base of my little toe. He also found the second toe which is roughly the centre of the foot. He then used these measurements to fit the new cleats. I then hopped on the bike and gave feedback on how the position felt. So if that's like that then it feels like it should be more like that. With a few adjustments, we were good to go. It's worth noting that the angle of my feet wasn't actually identical. This may be due to the leg break previously. I needed my right heel to be closer inwards towards the bike. When I say stop, you just stop pedaling and try to keep that position the same. Yeah. So one, two, three, stop. So that's a basic cleat position sorted. As I said earlier, Remain offers a foot activation service which will be coming in a future video where we'll look closer at the feet, the feet position and all kinds of things. The one you've been waiting for, saddle height. Now, if you have done any research online about fitting, bike fitting, then you will know that the saddle height is one of the most discussed topics. And I want to quickly talk about proprioception. Now proprioception, otherwise known as kinesthesia, I think that's how you pronounce it, is your body's ability to sense movement, action and location. So you know when something feels right and you know when something feels wrong just because you can. So what's the relevance here? Your body has got used to the current position. So if the saddle height is changed and you know how much it is and in which direction, you can perceive it to be incorrect. If it's changed and you have no idea or by how much or in which direction then you lose your proprioception and are unable to tell the original position after multiple changes which is what Romain did with me. He changed the saddle height in increments from the current position dropping it down five mil at a time until it felt too low. We're gonna go down yeah until we find the points of under extension. When it was too low, I felt like I couldn't fully extend my leg to give full power. I also had hip impeachment, where my knee is basically coming so high in relation to my chest that it's an uncomfortable position for my hip. Remember that exercise that we've done at the start? Basically, my knee is trying to go further than that. We then raised the saddle by five mil at a time, and this is where it got interesting because I was trying to work out where the original position was as we were going back up. Then we go back up. All the way to over extension. What I actually thought was my original position was one centimeter lower than the original position. We then continued taking the seat higher to a place where it was uncomfortably high. I could really feel myself getting acquainted with the saddle, a bit too familiar. I was also noticeably pointing my toes to finish off the stroke. So at the bottom of the stroke, I had to point my toe. We dropped the saddle back down to a place I felt comfortable and refined with Romain's observations and expertise. In the end, the saddle dropped by roughly 12 mil, which honestly felt more like four centimeters. I'm really surprised how a small change can have such a big difference. One thing that I do want to mention is how reducing the saddle height affected my pedal stroke. A lower saddle gave a smoother pedal stroke with increased cadence and the saddle too high made me feel like I was whipping the pedals round on each rotation. The kicker turbo trainer that I was using was in erg mode and set to 160 watts. So as we changed the saddle height, my power stayed the same, but my RPM increased or decreased depending if we went up or down. Next, we looked at reach and also the handlebar width. My current bars were 39 centimeters wide when they were measured, although they were advertised as 38 centimeters when I bought them. For reference, my reach on my stem is 100 millimeters, so 10 centimeters. Remain also measured across my shoulders whilst I was standing and also measured across my shoulders when I was actually on the bike. This gives a good indication of what bar width should be right for me. Although the measurement gives a good indication of handlebar width, Remain followed the same process as the saddle height, making the bars wider one centimetre at a time until they felt noticeably too wide, and then making them smaller until they felt noticeably narrow. It's amazing how feeling the extremes can actually help you understand and feel what is natural and where your arms actually want to naturally fall. Too wide and I felt like a bit of a parachute and your arms are clearly wider than your shoulders. Too narrow and your elbows are at an uncomfortable angle and you have to reach around the bars to get to the levers. For me, 38 centimeters was a perfect width. This felt very natural and my arms naturally fell in this position. Now onto the reach, and I honestly thought that this would have a big difference, but again, I didn't realize just how much a small change can make to how you feel on the bike. We followed the same process, reducing the reach until it was too short and then back out again until it was too long. 
all the time I tried to feel what was right um, and Remain was looking for visual cues as well. Throughout the whole process of adjusting the reach I was doing the release test. This is where I take my hands off the bars and put them to the side. My torso would either fall downwards pretty quick or I'd remain stable. You can feel within yourself if you are stable or not and this helped me and remain C where I felt most balanced on the bike. It is a great exercise and I guess it's one that anyone can do at home on a turbo trainer. Don't do it out on the road for obvious reasons. So if your reach is too long, then your shoulders rotate forward as you are overextending to reach the hoods. Your arms will also be pretty straight and won't have a bend at the elbow. If you imagine hunching your shoulders with your arms out in front of you, that's how I felt. You may also notice when you are riding that your hands don't naturally fall on the hoods. Instead, they fall a little bit further back because that's what feels most comfortable to you. Too short on the other hand, and it's the opposite. Your shoulder blades are basically pushing together and your chest is pushed forward. Your arms have a massive bend and they are compensating for the short reach. You may also feel excessive pressure on your hands and also have a feeling like you're pushing the bars away. You're trying to get them further away from you. These are all feelings that Remain explained to me when I was on the bike to help me understand what was correct or what to look out for. So where did that leave me and my reach? Well, the best position for me, so what felt right and what Remain suggested was a reduction in my reach by around two centimeters from my original position overall. I would like to say I'm surprised, but since having a call with Remain a month ago, I thought as much. I've basically been stretched out on a rack for three years. It was one of those moments where I really thought, yeah, I probably should have done this sooner. Up next in the bike fit is the saddle setback, often referred to as saddle fore and aft. This is how far forward or how far back the saddle is on the rails. As mentioned earlier, my saddle is as far back as it can go, which is how the bike came and I've never adjusted it. Changing the saddle setback is also going to affect the saddle height. Everything is connected within a bike fit, so keep that in mind. We did the same with the saddle setback as the saddle height, changing it in small increments forward and then small increments back. The saddle setback affects your balance on the bike as well and how your weight is distributed. So again, you want to use your proprioception to feel what is actually correct and feel where you feel most balanced. So like equal pressure on your hands and your ass. In the end, we moved my saddle forward by five millimeters. Now with this change, it felt like I was far more planted on the saddle and not just sitting on the nose of the saddle. I also felt a good weight balance between my hands and my ass. There was also an issue with my saddle clamp as it didn't allow us to clamp the saddle down perfectly level. This is because of the predefined intervals on the clamp. So originally the saddle was minus 2.2 degrees, so it was facing downwards. We changed it so that it was 1.2 degrees facing up. This was the lesser of the two evils and they were the choices that we had. As the saddle setback changed, so did the saddle height, and it dropped about two millimeters, I believe. So the total saddle height reduction up to this point was 14 millimeters. Now, bearing in mind, as the saddle height is reduced, it also brings the saddle closer to the bars because of the seat tube angle, so reducing your reach. Next, we looked at knee alignment, making sure that the center of the knee was in line with the center of the foot. This was done using a laser level. I then pedaled and remain looked at the alignment to see how we were tracking. The left knee was pretty good and the right knee was okay, but marginally out. As we mentioned earlier though, this will be covered and adjusted in the foot activation session, which will be coming in a future video. We didn't have time on the day, unfortunately, to do that. And there we have it. My new position has been found on the rig. My God, okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. And it was now time for remain to take all the measurements so that we have them on record if we ever need to fit my position to another bike or this bike again. It's amazing how the body adapts to an incorrect position. For three years I've ridden this bike and all of this time I could have been in a more comfortable position, potentially producing more power as well. So now we have all the measurements, it will then be a case of buying new parts for my bike to match the new measurements. Off came the bar ends, the bar tape and the levers, on went the new bars. As Romain suggested, I leave the bar tape off until I was happy with the new lever position. Now overall the reach has been reduced by around 20 mil, the saddle height reduced by 14 mil, the saddle bought forward by five mil and I have a new cleat position on my shoes. The bars have also been changed from a 39 slash 40 centimeter width to a 38 centimeter width. And here is what the position looked like before. And here is what the position looked like after. So what did these changes have on my position and riding? Firstly, I have my neck back. You can now actually see it, which shows just how much difference a bike fit has made straight away. I was really hunched before. I'm also no longer reaching for the bars as my hands fall more naturally on the hoods. This one was really noticeable for me, like just sitting on the bike. The reduced reach also means that my elbows have a better bend or a, a larger bend, should I say, whereas before they were much straighter. Overall, my shoulders and arms feel more relaxed and in a more sustained 
sustainable position. My arse also feels more planted on the saddle, not the easiest to see or show, but before the fit, I was sitting on the nose of the saddle. Now I feel like I'm planted on the saddle and it's given me more support and the improved reach made me feel more balanced overall. Now, if you learned something new in this video and would like to see more bike fit videos, then do subscribe. A big thank you to Remain at getabikefit.com again for letting me record the session and doing this video. I will see you fine people in the next one.